Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. Podcast guesting is an integral part of your online visibility strategy, especially if you want to create success without social media. And even if you do want to be on social media, podcast guesting is still an incredible way to just increase that online visibility and really showcase your expertise. Today, we are going to review the advantages of being a podcast guest, and we're going to, or I am going to share with you strategies for pitching to be a podcast guest. Podcast pitching can be tricky. And if you don't have the resources to hire someone to do it for you, I want to share these strategies with you so that you can get more visibility and increase the size of your audience. I'm also going to talk about what not to do, what to avoid when you are pitching to be a podcast guest. Now, be sure you stay till the end. Because to show my appreciation for you being here with me and being a consistent listener of the show, I have created, with the help of my team, of course, a sample pitch and a one-sheet template for you to use as you move forward on your podcast guesting journey. So let's talk first about the advantages of being a podcast guest. Well, first and foremost, you're going to increase your online visibility you are going to demonstrate your authority in your niche. What that does is builds your credibility so that you can be seen as the go-to expert in your industry. Being a guest on podcast builds trust. When the host invites you to be on their show as a guest, they are demonstrating that they trust you to come on their show and provide value for their listeners. They're trusting that you're going to come in, you're going to share your expertise, and you're going to do that in a way that is respectful and honest and authentic, and you're not just coming on to promote yourself and to sell. They're trusting you to come, to bring value so that their listeners will appreciate them more. But with that being said, they're demonstrating trust for you. Therefore, their listeners are already going to trust you because they trust the host. So it makes it so much easier because they become a warm audience instead of when interviewed on a podcast, the host is also going to ask you where people can connect with you. This is your opportunity to drive traffic to your website. This shows Google and other search engines that you provide value and that they should send more people to your site. Not only that, but most hosts will actually give you the opportunity to share a call to action. This is an incredible way to grow your email list drive traffic to your email list so that you have these people in your community now and you can continue to nurture them and ultimately convert them to paying clients. When you're a guest on a podcast, you increase people, you increase the size of the audience that you are able to reach. Your host or the host of a podcast has an audience of their own. And chances are it's pretty big if it's a reputable show. So you have now opened the door to reach way more people than you would have if you were not a guest on that show. If you think about it, they will hear your voice. They may see you on the video. The host is asking you questions and you have an opportunity to shine. This actually begins to build a relationship with the listeners. And this can go much deeper than just someone seeing posts, especially static posts, on social media, because it gives them real insight into you and how you communicate with other people. So that is another benefit. You're building relationships. When you build those relationships with listeners or hosts 
of the shows that you guest on, you're actually increasing your opportunity for collaborations and referrals. So at the end of the day, you're experiencing many benefits and having the opportunity to increase your exposure, grow your authority, share your expertise, demonstrate that you are the go-to. You are giving everyone concrete evidence that you are credible and you are someone they can trust. And this will entice them to join your community so that you can continue to nurture them and convert these leads to paying clients. All right, so let's talk now about podcast pitching strategies. Employing strategies to pitch to be a podcast guest will improve your um, success rate as well as your credibility. Don't just pitch a podcast by throwing spaghetti at the wall, so to speak. Actually use these strategies because the more strategic you are, the more likely you're going to find shows that are a good fit for you, that has listeners that are your best fit clients, and you're going to have more opportunities for a yes instead of a no. So the first strategy that you need to employ is actually determining which podcasts to pitch. The key here is you want to make sure that these podcasts align with your values and your message. The last thing you want to do is have a guest appearance on a show that is not aligned with your values or your business. Because what that does is that creates confusion. And we know that confused people don't buy. So immediately, if you're creating confusion by going on a show that is not aligned with your values or not aligned with your business and what you do and how you serve your people, you're going to create confusion and decrease trust. Never a good thing. Podcast guesting is not about quantity. It is about quality. Sure, be on as many podcasts as you want, but if they're not a quality podcast and if you aren't on podcasts that are aligned with your values in your business and has an audience with people that are best fit clients for you, then you're not doing anybody a service. So make sure that when you're choosing these podcasts that you want to pitch to, that they are aligned with you, your message, your business, and your values. So before you pitch, this is strategy number two, before you pitch a podcast, please read the podcast description and listen to at least two episodes so that you understand, number one, the show's format. Number two, you can recognize standard questions. Maybe they ask the same questions to every guest. You need to be able to recognize that so you can be prepared Make sure that you have answers to those questions and that you feel authentic answering them. Ensure that you like the host and that you feel confident that you can have a valuable, effective conversation with them. If the chemistry is not there with a host, the interview is going to go south. So you need to make sure that you like this person's voice, you can engage with them, you can interact with them, you feel connected to them, you feel aligned with them. These are all so important for you to be able to be successful in an interview as a guest. But my point is that we have to know who the audience is. And we can tell that by the description of the show. And we can tell that by hearing how the host talks to her, his or her audience, the content they're publishing. Make sure that all of that is aligned with your business and your values, most importantly. You also want to select reputable shows. So look at the show's ratings and reviews. Read what the reviews say so that you can understand and appreciate what the listeners are saying about the show. Make sure that what they're saying is aligned with what you're going to be able to deliver to them on the show. So the rating is basically a number, right? So it's like one to five stars. If it's below four stars, I would question its reputability. Now, 
with that said, it is absolutely critical that you look at the reviews and the ratings. One bad rating can destroy the overall rating. And that's just because of how that works. So somebody could have a, a, a negative or a yeah, a negative, I guess, rating of a one rating instead of a five. And depending on how many ratings they have, that could dramatically influence their overall rating. So consider that. But read the reviews because the ratio of the rating and the reviews is going to be very important for you to be able to determine, okay, is this really not a great show? Is it does it lack reputability? Or was it just one or two people who didn't appreciate it? And you can get a really good sense of that by reading some reviews. And while you're there, leave a rating and review because that is critical. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Now, another way that you can show, determine the show's credibility, reputability is looking at their rank. So for example, the Robin Graham Show is a top 1% globally ranked podcast. It still shocks me. And would I love to get higher? Oh, yes, I would. I would love to be in the top 0.5% or even better. But I need your help to do that because I ratings and reviews are how we get there, as well as subscriptions and downloads and all that good stuff. So spread the word for me, will you please? All right, I digress. Back to the content. Listen Notes is a place you can go to, to identify the the data that you need to evaluate a podcast. So you can go to, to Listen Notes. It's just listennotes.com and it will show you what the show's ranking is. And that'll give you a really good idea of whether or not you want to pitch the show or not. You can also find out about the host there and you can even search the host's name on Listen Notes and discover more about them. For example, podcasts they've guested on. So it's a great way to kind of go down a rabbit hole to discover more podcasts that you want to guest on. Okay, so another thing I want to emphasize here, when you read the description of the podcast while you're evaluating that podcast and that host, make sure you understand what their process is, okay? Some people have it very specific, like I do, in the description of the show, that it is an application process to be a guest. If that is the case, do not send an email pitch, okay? Because first of all, that wastes your time. Second of all, it wastes the host time. And oftentimes, people like this happens to me all the time. I get these email pitches. First of all, that's not our process. So they're just like that just takes up time that isn't necessary. Second of all, I'll get pitches for for guests who are not at all aligned. Like I can have someone from the, you know, like a real estate um, mogul, someone who is in development, real estate development, wanting to be on the show. Well, I don't know if you want to hear that information, let me know, because then I would have someone like that on the show. But typically that doesn't align with our content, right? I've I've also had people pitch, you know, we will do a show on maybe finances. And then all of a sudden I have an influx of 10 pitches, email pitches on financiers or, you know, people who are in the finance industry. That's not our primary focus. So if we've just done an episode on that, maybe we'll revisit it in the future, but don't send in a pitch related to something or almost identical to something that they've already had on the show recently. Put that on your list to pitch later when they have had some time to pass and had other episodes in between so that you can provide value and that your value will be added onto their value, the previous guest. Hopefully that makes sense. The bottom line is do your homework before you pitch. Leave a rating and review, a genuine review. I mentioned this before. This is so key. When you pitch to be a guest, a host is going to look to see if you've, or ask on an application, if you have left a rating and review. Listen, that is how podcasts grow. That is how hosts are able to get credible, reputable, amazing guests. And it also inspires the host to continue on this journey of producing content for free. This is a gift to everyone. This isn't 
For most people, it's not a huge moneymaker. Now, for some people it is, okay? But for the average podcast host who is a solopreneur or has a very small team, this is something that they're doing as a way to serve their listeners. So keep that in mind. And if you want them to do you a favor and have them on your show, just give them a gift in return and leave a rating and review for them. Because it will, number one, warm their heart. They will appreciate it immensely. And you'll you'll develop that trust and respect, the mutual trust and respect, and open more doors for opportunities for relationships with that host later on. And that may sound kind of silly or superficial, but those ratings and reviews really do mean so very much to podcast hosts. So keep that in mind and take the time. It doesn't take but a second to click five stars and then write a quick review, a couple of sentence demonstrating what you appreciate about the show, what you enjoy about it, the value that's provided, or what you like about the host and their personality. It just really does impact the show the growth of the show, the guests that the host is able to get, and it does inspire and motivate the host to continue providing the value. Now, I mentioned before, in the description, there may be a a line or a statement that says, apply to be a guest, no email pitches, please. Or they may say, here's the email address to send a pitch to. Be sure and check that description or their website to see what their process is and then follow that process. When you follow the process, the host will see that you respect what they have requested. They have that process in place. For example, we have a process in place. It's a simple application, but we have it in place because our process is automated, which saves us a ton of time on the back end. We have all the questions there. We don't have to go and research about the person that is pitching to us, we have all that we need. Versus an email pitch, we're going to have to go and look at their website. We're gonna have to go and look at their social media feeds. We're gonna have to go and look at you know, information to find out more about them. Most people are trying to run a business, manage a team, do the podcast, and all the other aspects of business. So just be mindful. If they have a process, follow the process. Do not waste their time by sending an email. And don't waste your time by sending an email. Because chances are you're not going to get the answer you want if you're not following their process. When you pitch to be a guest on a podcast, include all pertinent information that a host would need in order to have a great conversation and really highlight your area of expertise. When you write a pitch, connect with the host right away and let them know that you have listened to their show. Share with them what has resonated with you, what you appreciate about them and their show. Let them see that you have listened and you're genuinely interested you enjoy their show, you enjoy how they present information, and you find value in what they're sharing or their guests are sharing. Mention episodes, specific episodes that align with your values and your mission. Share what you gained from listening and include your own unique perspective about the topic that was presented. Introduce yourself and the problem you solve for your best fit clients. Be authentic, genuine, and honest. Make a list or provide a list of key topics that you want to discuss or that you are open to discussing and give them a list of questions that they can ask you. And that makes their life so much easier. But what it also does is it makes your life easier and it gives you more confidence going into the interview. It kind of puts the control of the interview in your lap versus being completely subjected to questions on the fly. Now, some hosts don't have a list of questions that they typically follow. So they want to know what your expertise is 
and what you believe in, what your values are and what value you're going to provide your listeners. And they depend on that for crafting their structure of the interview or what they want to focus on. For me, that's really important because we use that information to determine our key phrases, our titles, and all those things that help get the podcast seen. So keep in mind, if you want to be a podcast guest, chances are, yes, number one should be that you want to serve other people. But number two, you're you're probably striving for increased visibility. And if you're striving for increased visibility, then you want to help the host create a really good interview so that you can truly demonstrate your skills and expertise. And what that does is ultimately it builds trust. Include a link to your website. Make sure your email address is there. And provide a one sheet that has a summary of everything about you that they would need to know your bio, include a headshot so they don't have to go searching for that, and give a link to your media kit if you have one. If you don't have one, we have other episodes about what to put in a media kit, but basically it's your bio, it's all the links to everything about you where people can find you that the host is probably going to put in their show notes, but also a headshot of you a professional headshot. I am telling you that is so important because most likely they're going to put that picture on a graphic. So the more professional you look, the more people are going to trust you. You want that image to be your face so that people can see your eyes and smile. That's how they're going to connect with you. But you also want your face clear, not blurry, not underexposed, Because you want people to be able to see who you are and that you care about professionalism and quality. At the end of the pitch, make sure that you express gratitude. Thank them for the time and consideration that they have put into reading your pitch. Now, if you have not heard from them within a week, feel free to follow up, but wait a week. And here's why. People are busy, and if you bombard them with messages back to back, they're going to get frustrated. So a week after you pitch, if you haven't heard, go ahead and follow up. Resend the pitch or just give them a reminder asking them if they got it or perhaps did it go in your junk file in that event, here it is again. Make it easy for them. Don't make them have to go search for your previous message in their inbox. It's all about making it easy for them to say yes. So think about putting yourself in their position. Would you appreciate X, Y, Z? How would you want this to be done? How thorough would you want somebody's pitch to be? Put yourself in their shoes and then pitch accordingly. Now let's go over some of the mistakes that I have seen in pitches. Whatever you do, do not say, your podcast looks interesting. I'd like to be a guest. When someone says that to me, and trust me, I have heard it. When someone says that in an email pitch to me that they think my podcast looks interesting and they want to be a guest, I immediately shut down. Because don't tell me it looks interesting. If you want to be a guest on my show, and I am sure every other host out there agrees with this. If you want to be a guest on the show, you better know that the show is the right fit. Because if you're telling me it looks like it's interesting, that tells me you haven't listened. You definitely haven't left a rating and review. And you don't know if my audience is aligned with your values, your mission, and your message. So that's number one of what not to do. Another mistake that I see quite often is misspelling the host's name. It's not hard to go to the show notes, to go to the description, to go to their website, to confirm the spelling of their name. That's just a piece of respect that you can do very easily. Make sure you spell their name correctly if you are writing out an email pitch. Don't be silly. You want to be authentic. You'll want to be genuine. But keep in mind that everybody has a limited amount of time. So if you're filling a pitch with frivolous, I 
could say nonsense, but frivolous information um, that's kind of silly, it's not direct, it's not to the point, they're going to lose interest because a host is going to look at these pitches and they they want to know right away, okay, is this a good fit? Could I have a conversation with this person and provide value to my listeners? Is the host going to learn something or feel like there was value added? So when you're doing this, you want to show your personality, but you want to show it authentically and somewhat conservatively so that you're getting straight to the point. You're letting them know specifically what the value is that you're going to provide and all of those other details that I suggested before. You can acknowledge that you know they're busy, but oftentimes that seems very flippant. So make sure that whatever you're putting in the pitch, it is respectful. I think it all comes down to that. It's respectful of the host and you're making it easy for them to say yes or no. And if they say no, take that as a blessing because chances are if they say no, they saw something in the pitch that was not aligned with what they need for their show, what their listeners, they know their listeners and they know their what their listeners want. So if they say no, there's a reason. So make sure that you let it go and maybe you circle back a year later. Maybe they're looking for someone with more experience, more followers. You never know. But whatever it is, they've said no for a reason. So at that point, you thank them and you move on. And, and let me say, connect with them on other platforms and build a relationship with them. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Especially if you want to grow your business without social media, without having the, the distraction and chaos of it, then build relationships, connect with people, like their content, consume their podcast, follow them on YouTube, whatever it may be. But stay visible so that they understand that you do truly respect them and that you are going to provide value because if you stay front of mind by connecting with them and engaging with them, you might have the opportunity again in the future, even if there was a no now. And if they do say yes, we have a whole episode on how to be a good podcast, get, podcast guest, and that is linked in the show notes. So I encourage you, this is all about pitching. Go and read that blog post or listen to that episode, which is linked because there's some really great information in there too. Because if you want to have collaboration opportunities, if you want to have future guest spots or recommendations or referrals or any of that good juicy stuff that's going to help you with your online visibility, make sure you listen to that too. All right. So again, back to the whole don't be silly thing. Unless you're a comedian and your whole brand is based on humor, just keep it serious and not too serious. I'm not saying like serious and boring. I'm saying stick to the facts, stick to what they need to know to be able to make an informed decision as to whether to have you on as a guest or not have on a as a guest. All right. So don't forget, include the link to your website, include your one sheet or a link to it, include your media page or a link to your media page on your website. If you don't have a link to the media page on your website, you can mention in the pitch some shows that you've been on previously because sometimes people want to hear your voice or they want to see how you have engaged or the information you've provided. Have you provided value? What is your voice like? What is your what is your personality like in an interview? So provide that so they can check that out. Always, 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 as I said before, thank them for their time and consideration and include that list of topics and your email so that they can respond to you. Another piece of advice that I'm going to give you that I think is really important is that don't connect to someone on social media or LinkedIn and then immediately DM them. Oh, I see you have a podcast. I'd like to be a guest. Engage in their content first. Build the relationship first. Let them get to know you. You get to know them. 
let them see that you respect them and what they're doing. And then you can reach out to them. But I do say it don't plan on DMing or sending direct messages on social platforms to pitch. Be professional and do it in the form of a pitch by email or follow their process. If they don't have a process, you don't have their email address, okay, then a direct message on LinkedIn or social media would be fine. But chances are they're going to be more likely to say yes if you have built a relationship with them and you're actually formally pitching them versus popping into their DMs. We're all spammed in DMs all day, every day. So just keep that in mind. If you don't want to appear spammy or salesy or whatever, consider doing a pitch by email or especially if they have a process following their process. And then lastly, as far as don'ts, make sure that you are not there to promote yourself. It's always serve over sales. So think about that. Provide value. Demonstrate true, true care and respect for the host and the listeners when you are a guest. And it's going to go so much farther than if you are trying to sell yourself or your product or your service when you're a guest on a show. You'll have the opportunity to sell to the listeners later when you share a call to action and they join your email list. But don't make the appearance about promoting yourself. Self-promotion will never win the day as a podcast guest. Unless, big caveat here, unless they specifically ask you to do that. All right, friends, that's a wrap. I've given you the benefits of being a podcast guest, the strategy as far as pitching, and then what to avoid. So I hope you found this super helpful. And I encourage you to go to the show notes and download that gift of a sample pitch and a template in Canva for a one sheet. You, It's totally customizable. So you can change the colors, you can add your text, everything's mapped out for you and explained so that you can easily create your one sheet and easily craft a pitch to be a podcast guest. That is a wrap for today. I so thank you for being here. Be sure you check out the blog post, the show notes, because there will be those other links to other episodes. And I hope that you find so much joy in being a podcast guest. And I hope it brings you a lot of visibility and great success. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time. So I truly appreciate you joining me. And be sure and visit the website, therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success. 